Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for getting your day going with us as we help you plan for the big events in your neighborhood. Now, the Weather Channel certainly has you covered here from coast to coast. Well, as post-tropical barrel fizzles off the East Coast, many communities across the U.S. are still feeling the impacts in its wake, especially the heat. We do have a lot of heat again today. There's still spots across the Mid-Atlantic that are going to be soaring. Um, the middle of the country, temperatures really start to go up again. And we haven't lost it in the West. There's been no change there. Those it poor is, folks, oh. it has been brutal. Yeah, and it continues. And, and especially now in the East, we had a little bit of a break uh, mm -hmm. yesterday in some places. We've had some stormy times that keeps the temperatures down a bit, but it's coming back with a vengeance. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, a lot to talk about there. And of course, power outages still affecting millions. And it's, it's everything here, Justin. Thank you for sharing that story. You know, uh, you can uh, offer someone a cup of coffee, some water, but these days offering them a charge is everything to their devices. Uh, you know, we're still watching, of course, in Texas, the heat and the, the impacts of that. With your heart hit so many communities uh, and you now we're dealing with another flood event. One year to the day here. Unbelievable, right? These are all the storm reports that we can share with you from the what the remnants of bail brought to the Northeast. It was a lot of flooding, especially in northern New York and to northern Vermont, even parts of New Hampshire. We had some flooding reports in New York State and central New York, but mostly wind damage and four tornado reports so far. We'll see if additional ones are added once they go out and do some surveys. Uh, but again, those four tornado reports came on a day when there was many, many tornado warnings. Warnings. In fact, a record number of tornado warnings issued by the National Weather Service um, in Boston. So 18 warnings issued there more than more in one day than they've ever issued in any single year to give you perspective on what kind of day we had overall in the state of New York, 42 tornado warnings, which was the most ever issued in a single day in New York State. Now, let's look at, um, you know, when you might typically see tornadoes. It is the summertime, um, so yes, but it's not, I mean, having four is a lot considering the average is about two. Rainfall was also a factor in a lot of your day yesterday. We had flooding with more than seven to eight inches of rain in a few pockets up here in the parts of northern New York State. So um, the Brown Keene Valley saw some reports of flooding and flooded out roads, more than eight inches of rain up there. Numerous spots with more than four inches across Vermont and extreme northern New Hampshire as well. So let's talk about the moisture that we are working with here. Some of that now extending here into eastern Maine. We're going to get some rain. We also also have moisture that extends from the Atlantic all the way up the eastern seaboard that's getting brought into this too. So we really do have a lot of rain coming our way across the mid-Atlantic and even some spots in the northeast have some potential for heavy rain as we get into the next several days. For now, let's focus in on where we've got rain in northeastern Maine, north of the Bangor area. We do have one flash flood warning there. Rainfall today will be with us, but watch what happens here. This, this through the mid-Atlantic into the northeast, we're going to start tapping into all that Atlantic moisture that is getting brought into this here and that is going to bring some really big heavy rainfall rates amounts that could add up and lead to some flash flooding. We've got to watch that. This is your tomorrow forecast and uh, we'll be watching this getting into the weekend as well. Greg, it's your all part of uh, what's happening in the tropics. Yeah, it's connected. The Northeast experienced some extreme weather in the last 24 hours. Remnants from barrel brought downpours to Vermont, causing significant flooding. Well, CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen is live in Waterbury. Uh, looks like we had some technical difficulties yeah. there here. Um, you know, um, this is uh, there's still some rain out there. So we'll say they're not they're they're better right now, but there's a little bit more to go. Yeah, absolutely. Just crazy what can happen, right? Uh, just a lot of rain in a short period of time. And that's what you end up with there uh, in Vermont. Well, you know, it could be some time before we learn talk a little bit about barrel here, uh, sort of its journey, which I mean, it was a long, long journey started well out there in the Atlantic uh, mm -hmm. before making some impact to a, a number of land masses. Going back to the 1st of July, right? Mm -hmm. Made landfall across parts of the eastern islands of the Caribbean, Grenada, 150 mile per hour winds, island of Kariakou, and did a lot of damage yeah. along the way. Yeah. yeah, some of the images is just <sighs> It's like there was nothing. That's yeah. right. In some Everything places. was smashed. Yeah. Um, Carrie Coop, Petite Martinique, May Row, um, all these smaller islands, the really Grenadines. hard. Union Island, uh, hardly uh, hard impacted. And then it got even stronger once it passed them, right? It got when it was yeah. over the uh, Eastern Caribbean Sea. We saw winds uh, estimated by the data and the hurricane mm -hmm. reconnaissance 
165, and it says 160 there, but it got even stronger than that, reaching category five intensity. Reminder that you know the eyewall, especially of systems like these, are uh, life-threatening, and certainly yeah. many other parts of them are as well. But look at some of the records that Barrel set. These are some of the superlatives that we've been talking about for a long time. Uh, the earliest category five on record uh, by quite a bit. And that is very notable given the atmospheric conditions and the oceanic conditions that we saw. Yeah, and just early in the season too, the farthest east, a June hurricane is formed in the tropical Atlantic here. That's quite no noteworthy. Yeah, and we've talked about how quickly it rapidly intensified, right? This thing went from nothing to mm -hmm. boom. Like Earliest, nothing. strongest, yeah. rapid intensification, mm -hmm. all these things that we think of when we... 80. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, this speaks to sort of the record setting ter territory that we've been in with this. And then, of course, we know it didn't stop there. We saw a lot of severe weather yesterday in New York. Uh, an incredible amount of tornado warnings. This was unbelievable. So, yeah, yeah. it was incredible. Mm -hmm. Those whole house or whole business generators. Right. Justin, thank you. Thank you for that and sharing that. I do want to talk about another spot where we need to have power on, and that's to make sure we've got cooling going for the heat in the southwest. It's extreme. Yeah. Uh, and for areas that are no stranger to deal with the heat, I mean, Vegas for us, look at our current 115-plus degree streak. It's now number one on record, sitting at five days. And we'll probably be adding to that here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another day with potential record highs here in Las Vegas, in the southwest, in the northwest. Here it continues again today underneath this big heat dome that is just, it's very stationary, it's unrelenting, and this map has looked like this for the last several days. It really Quite has. Deep, really. It really has. The only area getting, I hate to say relief, but you're not under advisories or watches is the Pacific Northwest, but it's still going to be pretty warm. I mean, Portland's still getting into the yeah. upper 80s for the day. But you can see farther south, the triple digits uh, just widespread. Yes, it continues tomorrow. Sacramento, Fresno, Bakersfield, Las Vegas, all continuing. Reading, we've set all-time records already with this event, and it just hasn't gotten any cooler. It's driving an extreme heat risk again tomorrow. Cottages and storm damage don't just affect folks living in big cities, but also those who help put the food on your table. Tyler Froberg is one of the farmers feeding America who is cleaning up from this hurricane. Farmer Froberg, thanks for being on the show. You've been busy. You've been without power. And we understand that Hurricane Barrel knocked down all of your Christmas trees on your Christmas tree farm. So what's the status right now? Well, as you can... How does that work? I guess the roots are fine. It's just the trees got sort of uplifted a little? That's right. Uh, these trees are very, very resilient. It's good to hear. It was, so what do you think in terms of an estimate in terms of how long you think it's going to take to get all those those trees uh, upright, upright? Yeah, so uh, we were fortunate enough to get. Can you describe what it was like when it was coming through? Well, you know, in my lifetime, uh, we went through Tropical Storm Allison. We went through Ike. We have that time and time again, and you know, it's not just the wind, but rain coming through and flooding parts of the Houston area. Uh, did that have any impact on the farm in terms of the, the heavy rain? Of course it did. You know, uh, the watermelon. Your farm is a big part of the community, and you're known for kind of giving back to the community there. What do you plan then for the rest of the season once, once you can get back into action there on the farm? Well, like I said, lucky enough. Not again, uh, yeah. people helping people, as uh, Justin Michaels likes to say. Yeah. Now, despite all this heat, I know those cleanup efforts are underway. What precautions are you taking to stay as cool as possible in some of the really scorching hot uh, conditions? Well, hydration is key. What we've been... Froberg, Farmer Froberg, thank you for joining us here. Friend of the show, you've joined us quite a bit. We're, uh, you know, sorry this happened to you and hoping for a quick recovery there. I think some watermelon would be a good way to get some hydration. You mentioned watermelon. Yeah. It's a good hydrating fruit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, indeed. Yeah, uh, just to get wide-reaching impacts here being felt, uh, all thanks to Barrel. Well, we are only at the beginning of East Coast yeah, over the next couple of days. Yeah, so that front actually does extend all the way down through North and South Carolina, mm -hmm. and it's causing rain right now, some very heavy, actually, around the Greenville area. Wilmington will get showers throughout the day today. Some could be heavy at times, but also again tomorrow and again on Saturday. So what's going on, you're probably asking. Yeah, exactly. Well, what's set up here for us is uh, what's going on in terms of the pattern here. You can see the jet stream taking a bit of a dive there around the Great Lakes, but what we have is a feed of tropical moisture mm -hmm. just kind of hanging on here, and it's not going to be budging a whole lot in that zone here right along the East Coast. Yeah, I mean, at this point, 
that old that front in, in place would kind of be an old boundary there maybe washed out as we get into the weekend the most important thing is that we've got these disturbances that Greg was talking about here that's going to help usher in more moisture and we honestly have an atmospheric river set up with a lot of moisture coming in that is going to lead to some really heavy rainfall you know oftentimes talk about atmospheric rivers here in the east but we, I mean, time. here we have yeah. it, and that's going to mean that chance is going to be there for a lot of rain coming into some areas. Now, it's going to be very hard to pick out who's going to get the heaviest of the rain. Just know there's that possibility in these zones in the yeah. east. And at the moment, you can see with uh, flash on morning blind up in North Carolina, it's all about the storms on repeat mm -hmm. and the heavy rainfall rates and the amount of moisture that we have into the atmosphere here, and that continues into the weekend as we help you plan for the big events in your neighborhood. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. That's right, you know, as post-tropical barrel fizzles off the East Coast, many communities across the U.S. are still feeling some of the impacts in its wake, especially the heat and the humidity. Tropical landfalling cyclones, they bring a lot of humidity along the way. You know, we've got that returning to the plains as we get this weekend. Believe it or not, it it hasn't been that hot in Houston, relatively speaking as it could be. It, we are going to be going up here, the heat and the humidity both returning to Texas, which is tough because people are still without power. Yeah, uh, last check still over a million, I believe, here for us, still without power there in Texas. In